Hello everyone, I am Dr. Paweł Szuba-Paszkiewicz and I come from Poland and I'm really excited to take a part of an FDI Health Campus Life webinar. Today, I'd like to talk a little bit about the digital impression in modern dentistry. It's been almost six years since I have started going digital. Now things are much more easier and we can share our gained knowledge and know-how experience. So today I will discuss the possibilities of digital procedures, the limitations, where do we have to stop and choose the classic analog way of working and how to face the challenges posted by digital dentistry, especially digital impression. So coffee in your hand and let's start our webinar. Digital impression in our daily practice. How digital dentistry influenced my work and life? I thought at the very beginning, it is only about scanners. Who from you has got a digital gear like intro or scanner? Who believes in it? Who doesn't? Who thinks it will make us better dentists? So I think at first you have to know something about my passion, snowboarding. What does it have to do with the digital dentistry? Well, it does pretty much. Well, actually, I wasn't supposed to be a dentist. I'd rather wanted to be a professional snowboarder. But one day I realized that this sport is pretty much risky and had to make my call. Unfortunately, a couple of years later, I've also realized that, that dentistry is a risky job too. So you're gonna see what I mean on some photos in further part of my presentation. To do snowboarding, you need mountains, and that's the place where I have settled. This is how my place looks, my countryside place, which looks like this in the wintertime, <laughs> my city after bleaching, let's just say. So countryside does have other advantages that huge city doesn't. Well, at least the place I have chosen to live. So. From my perspective, the closest, biggest city with good snowboarding resorts is Innsbruck, actually. So what I was thinking, I when I want to realize when I want to do my passion like snowboarding, I was thinking that I have to live near the snowboarding resort. But from the other hand, if I want to do some nice things in dentistry, uh, like the technological stuff. I need to live in a bigger city like the Innsbruck mentioned before. But the technology used in my hometown helped me not to move out. No need to live in a big city anymore, but still love going to Austria for snowboarding. So digital dentistry, what is it all about? How do we perceive this phenomenon? Many people think that digital dentistry is just about scanners and digital impressions. So not true. It is far way more than just scanners and prosthodontic workflows. Digital doesn't equal scanners, we have to understand. However, scanners are just the beginning of the digital dentistry journey, something which is a must have really important part. I will tell you a story of myself and how I entered the digital scanning experience from the very beginning. For me, the start was a very, very hard and difficult because there was no experience from anyone. There were very few people who had knowledge and could help, but it was still very difficult to reach them. Our road to success was pretty bumpy and curved. So we had to rely on ourselves where the learning curve had to start from scratch without sufficient support from experienced clinicians during the learning curve, you can easily reach the moment of doubt and uncertainty. So this is the goal not to stop in this moment and not to go down and fall down uh, when you're just not wanting to go further. So learning curve, you can easily reach the moment of doubt and uncertainty where your skills are becoming uncertain 
and drastically drop down. And our goal is to just not stop in this moment, just to raise higher and higher with a little help of all our digital dental community, which is growing pretty fast. Hopefully, we're going to help you in the future uh, in your own digital pathway. So how does it look like that the uh, concept of gaining knowledge? This is like a Dunning-Kruger effect curved. So we had a moment of depression where we almost wanted to quit because of those hard moments of our uncertainty, which had led us to frustration, disillusionment and breakdown. And we were actually in this part and so-called valley of despair and after all that we had to raise ourselves and just gain more knowledge more, more and more and some things just started to have sense for us again so in other words the beginner's inflation led us to peak and in inflated expectations and from that point things started to get out of our control which led us almost to disaster so when trying to stand on, our feet became a slow and laborious process. But now, after six years of experience, we're here, happy to help and make your learning curve faster and road to gaining knowledge more straight and easy. So my reasons of going digital, switching from analog to digital, why did I do that? Technological development is driven by a need of fulfilling expectations as well as solving up-to-date daily problems, breaking the limits and meeting our expectations. Years before, I was comparing different impression materials and impression techniques, which led me to the conclusion that, where, that there is a very low percentage of success in achieving an ideal impression, analog impression. I pretty often resulted minor or major artifacts or errors that led me to the necessity of repeating the impression. Well, doing dozens of comparisons, I always was wondering why did I not get the repeatable outcome with impression materials, even though performing the same procedure in the same time and often achieving a different outcome. So snowboarding and dentistry, what do they have in common? Both contain a large amount of risks. Both consist of procedures which should be repeatable, but because of many unpredictable factors often lead to a failure. What happened here? This is an example of a procedure. Actually, how much um, freestyle is in freestyle? So what do you see here? It's a skilled snowboarder doing his procedure. Same conditions applied, same situation, same procedure, and once we have a success, and once we have a failure. So, back to the dentistry. As you can see, here we have a success, and here we have a failure with our analog impression. So this is what pretty happens during an impression taking transitions between phases of impression materials uh, there are of course many factors dependent like saliva exudation or mismatch setting time of impression materials but they in total they just give us a fail of an impression like in snowboarding so uh, from one hand you have a fail uh, when you have a big risk in dentistry. And from the other hand, if you fail doing snowboarding, you can have also problems uh, with your health too. So having no control of what is happening after placing an impression trail inside the mouth is like losing control in the air during snowboarding tricks. What both snowboarding and dentistry have in common, both consist a high risk procedures, which sometimes are unpredictable because of unstable conditions as in which they are performed. Same impression, analog procedure on the left and digital procedure on the right. And the question always asked is, how much accurate is digital impression? 
So I will turn the question back and ask how much accurate is an analog impression, despite of the fact uh, of expansion of impression materials and shrinkage of a gypsum, the compression caused by impression tray and material leads to teeth dislocation, which can cause inaccuracy of teeth positions in a range of 15 up to 80 microns with the healthy tissue. Pretty often we have to deal with prosthetic field which previously had a bone loss, which caused more movability of teeth and more dislocation. So one day I've decided to think out of the box, moving into digital solutions. What if we could stop and go back from where we could do it again the right way? So let's go to our snowboarding again. What would happen if we could stop in the middle of our procedure, refine this procedure? Because in this moment we can find out that something is going wrong with our procedure. And obviously in half of your, our jump in the air, it's not possible to stop. So how to do it in a digital dentistry? Let's just imagine that in digital dentistry you can stop in halfway and refine things just to get a success by the end of the procedure. That's not possible in real life because you can't stop obviously in half of the um, your jump in the air. You can't stick in the air because it's not possible. But in digital dentistry there are like many things possible because you can stop in half of your procedure and refine it and do it again in a better way. So the advantages of digital impressions, even in the anatomical, when the anatomical conditions are real, really hard, such as like oversized anatomy, protruded teeth or undercuts, help us to create an accurate result with the first approach during the impressions. Just we want to get this not the problems seen here, like this. Same conditions and same patient, but totally different outcome. We could avoid so much errors performing digital procedure. So as you can see on the picture above, that's the digital part, that's the, the digital equivalent of an impression and that's the analog one. And obviously you can see here that it was a failure totally disaster because of the conditions mentioned before. And another example of the case, I've tried my best to achieve flawless analog impression, but once again, digital equivalent outcome was more accurate. Analog impression was containing impression material phase transitions and drag silicon causing inaccurate prosthetic field for further laboratory workflow, as you can see here. This may cause bad fit of future restoration since Dental Lab has to sculpture inaccurate stone cast models to get rid of excessive gypsum material looming on prepared teeth abutments. And, and another example of full arch impression where the biggest problem was the timing of putting the impression material in place where setting time of the phases is crucial. The laminated layers have occurred in analog impression and again, properly performed digital procedure made digital impression free from artifacts, making it more accurate. And now referring to the digital thinking, an example of a complete workflow where I had to replace four accidentally cracked veneers, which I have made to my patient eight years ago. Uh, the goal was to copy and improve the shape of a previous dental work in a complete digital environment. A buy a copy of cracked veneers. So how to replace the cracked veneers? Firstly, we do the pre-op scan and bite registration to preserve the shape of teeth we want to replace. Then we cut out teeth, which are going to be prepared again. Then we can do the diatherm gingiva corrections to alter the shape of one of teeth, our teeth. And we do the post prep acquisition. When we're not satisfied with the prep, we can cut out the indensing margin and finish lines and scan them again. Then we can block parts avoiding overriding data. 
we can use the retraction feeders for to expose the margin line better then we can block it again and repeat the procedure as many times as it's needed then we can see the pre and post op scans aligned together onto each other so this is pre and post op scan you can see they're aligned perfectly onto each other to achieve a good shape of teeth then uh, when they're aligned onto each other we can measure the prep thickness the patient is still on a chair we can check up the undercuts with an undercut tool and when everything is fine we can send it to the lab of course with some photography we can proceed with the exocut final design if we have CBCT measurements we can do the measurements of functional occlusion we can put those information into the virtual articulator and do the virtual equilibration as well as checkup of the chewing envelope everything goes digitally and once everything is ready we can proceed with the adhesive cementation and that's the final result of our replaced cracked veneers after delivering the final restorations restorations in a day of a delivery and six months post-op recall from the delivery another simple example of the possibilities of digital impression taking workflow tricks if we could stop go back emerge tissues and refine before we fail so this is a trick with a composite feeder helps to retract soft tissues and unveil the preparation margin then the properly scanned area can be blocked to avoid over scanning with the different data such as the collapsed gingiva in this procedure we do not have to worry for retention of the excessive tissues covering our preparation we can also avoid mechanical or chemical retraction materials making our procedure faster safer and easier Now at the end, we can also track the margin line and send it to our lab for a better workflow and communication. So this is how our preparation looks before and after mechanical retraction made by the composite feeder. And if we did not do the retraction, we would have achieved this kind of result which is not very satisfactory and after the feeder retraction we had a straight and opened margin line higher than the gingival level which is suitable for the future restoration for us my first digital case ever it is always recommended to take both analog and digital impression when we're performing our first cases with the new digital techniques we took both analog and digital impressions created diecast gypsum and 3d printed models and been able to compare the setting of the substructure created on the virtual models both on gypsum and 3d print as well as intraorally analysis comparisons and measurements lower arch had been previously restored with direct composite veneers which we have to reshape and alter to achieve better shape and color matching with the new upper teeth because patient's will was to have brighter teeth but we were so focused and excited with the new technologies that we have overslept something like the aesthetic evaluation of our patients uh, the dentofacial analysis should have been performed with more attention and care and this caused vertical maxillary excess of our canines which i have corrected after delivering the restorations so see the picture in the right upper corner so this is how it looked like after the reshaping after the delivery but in this moment we were not very satisfied with the excess of the of the canines of, over the upper lip 
And that is why digital dental photography and smile designing process is crucial during the creation of a complex treatment plan. And digital dentistry help us to collect all the data needed to create a virtual patient on which we are able to perform a complex treatment planning. This is how some of my daily work looks like. Sometimes I feel more like a computer specialist than practicing clinicians. Computer-driven prosthetic is something that every digital dentist must have in his office. Before and after digitally designed smile, which ended up with a real intraoral oral mock-up um, to show our patient a simulated result and how it looks like before the treatment and after 2D simulation made on a designing software such as Smile Designer Pro, which is the one I use. You can do it on DSD or Smile Cloud or any other. And before and after to the Smile Design based mock-up, a direct comparison inside the mouth of the patient. Direct video comparison before and with the mock-up. A simple cell phone recorded movies can efficiently help in dentofacial analysis for us as clinicians. And from the other hand, it's a very easy way to show how the future smile can look uh, in the reality on our patient. And we can show this movie to our patient and let him or her to decide whether feels comfortable with the new teeth. Digital dentistry helps us to reduce the dentofacial risk during planning, as well as to show an approximate final result which could be expected after delivery of final restorations. How digital dentistry goes beyond limits. This is an example of an implant prosthetic case with digital planning and remote collaboration with the laboratory. What we need is a dental scanner and intraoral markers, so-called scan bodies. Once we digitalize the data, we can proceed with any lab anywhere in the world where the sky is the limit. Because of our implant bridge requires a pontic connection, we have to create it before final impression taking. After prosthetic analysis, we have chosen the right spot for the pontic then we have made a pre-scan before removing the soft tissues to have a pre-op overview which helped us during planning the shape and depth of the pontic. Once we have completed the treatment plan, let's start our workflow, the digital acquisition step by step. At first, pre-emergence profile scan of prepared teeth. Healing abutments are still in place and we start to perform the scan of upper and lower jaw and the bite registration. Then we cut the healing abutment data out of the scan to make place for the new data with the emerging profiles. Once the scan is prepared, we unscrew the healing abutments and immediately scan the emerging profiles to avoid them collapsing. This technique helps us to achieve an exact emergence profile which has been previously shaped by the healing abutment. Once the scan is completed, we save it and are ready to go forward and don't have to worry about the emergent profiles anymore. Then we switch from pre-scan to post-scan mode and we place scan markers onto implants. Depending on the scanner and software, we scan the markers either one by one or all together to complete the data of implant positions. In this case, I wanted to create an immediate pontic lodge preparation during the final digital impression taking procedure. The procedure was done by erect electrosurgical knife with a special rounded tip. Then we cut out the data from the scan to make place for the new pontic shape. Next procedure is scanning the new created pontic area and aligning it with the rest of the scan, as we can see here. 
And now the scans are completed. And the beauty of the digital impression is that we can immediately proceed with the evaluation of the quality of the scan, as well as we can check the transversal slices, which can be done here in this special tool in our software, which help us to uh, see if the scan, if our Pontic is properly shaped on the scan. Pre and post scans superimposed onto each other help us to evaluate the shape of our Pontic. If we're not satisfied, we can always undo, go back and refine our procedures again during the same appointment. Once procedures are completed and the data is digitalized, we can proceed with the laboratory procedures by emailing scans to the desired location. Because it's digital, we can send it anywhere we want, sky is the limit. In this case, I was sitting on the course in Italy, 1500 kilometers away from my lab and connected by a team viewer and I was able to remotely participate in designing new Pontic for the final restoration. During the lecture break, my colleagues and our lecturer helped me with the final Pontic design. Final restorations before the delivery, zircon crowns and hybrid pre-cemented and post-screwed retained implant bridge. The bridge was firstly cemented on individual abutments with a passive fit, then was unscrewed in one piece, the cement excess was cleaned and was finally screwed retained back in place. Abutment apertures were cleaned and properly closed with sterile Teflon and flowable composite material. And this is 15, 15 months post-op recall. And that is how my post-op checkup looked like. Dental control, open up please, ma'am. Morning. I'm sorry for interrupting you, ma'am, but you need to show me your restorations. Okay, open and close. Close again. Any dysfunction? Does it work fine? Okay, thank you. This patient is my mom, so I'm pretty often able to do follow-ups of my restorations in this situation. Now, let's answer the question, what is the most challenging nowadays? Sometimes there's a moment where we have to stop and make our call, whether we still can go digital or have to step back and choose the analog procedures of working. And now difficult mixed implant and teeth full arch prosthetic case preparation for the scan. And I'd like to introduce to you my procedure, which I have called diatraction, which means diathermic guided chemomechanical retraction. In short, if we want to cut the soft tissues immediately before the scan, we have to be sure to have sufficient biologic width in the operating area. Biologic width checkup with my special MacGyver tool made of a composite feeder for, for bone sounding. Diathermy surgery for the gingival shortening, surgical crown lengthening or aesthetic gingival shortening for a better aesthetic proportions or other indications like mechanical purposes such as ferrule effect or sufficient retention of restoration. Cut coagulate, use the chemostatic foam for clean and dry operating area. And finally, we proceed with the subgingival scan of the preparation. Today I would definitely go, in this case, with a Verdi prep instead of classic preparation to gain more feral and better soft tissue adaptation. On the video you can see how much deep we can go with our scanner. We can go deep pretty much and it does not uh, depend just of a scanner. It depends of the way we can prepare our prosthetic field before the scan. 
But in the most cases, we need just a sulcus opening as a retraction cord substitute. So what we want to do now is a gentle gingiva sulci opening. How does retraction helps us to get a good subgingival scan? Once preparation is finished, we gently place a thin surgical tip inside the sulcus. Then using lowest effective power of our electrosurgical device, we're gently distracting the edge of the sulcus from margin of the preparation. We do not do a horizontal cut, but a vertical vaporization of the internal edge of the sulcus as shallow as possible to uncover the either margin of preparation or the bottom line of the sulcus when we have a shoulderless preparation. We create a sort of an open groove around the sulcus to get highly pronounced finish line. Then we proceed with the scan and temporalization. Is it safe? Gently performed chemomechanical retraction doesn't induce neither gum overgrowth or recessions. The tissue loss appears to be on the same level as compared to dual cord retraction procedure. But we have to keep in mind that tissues of the thin biotype, peritype, particularly in the static zone or a patient with a high smile line, are not suitable for roughening and can be challenged dealing with conventional retraction techniques. In those cases, it is advised to create a supra or equal gingival preparation and one thin cord technique or expensive, expensive retraction paste is advised. Sulcus roughening with the diatraction in the day of the procedure and nine months post-op recall, as you can see here, there's a healthy tissue around the margin of our preparations. This is how the initial situation looked like. And this is nine months post-op recall with our patient. And initial versus nine months post-op recall with a full smile. Now, having diatraction applied, we can now proceed with the scanning of our scan markers. It's worth to know the dynamic abutment system, our choice on this case. Implant supported screw retained restorations have the benefit of retrievability and do not have the liability of retained excess cement. When implants are placed within a 30 degree variance of the ideal trajectory, the dynamic abutment can be used and requires no increased depth of the implant or additional components. Redirecting screw from the dynamic abutment helps us to place the aperture of the screw canal in the right position of the closal part of the crown. So when even the implant is on a different trajectory to the crown, we can place the aperture right in the middle of the closal um, or closest surface of the tooth. This is our final post-op scan with the scar mar scan markers in place and post-op scan of a full arch mixed implant case where the scan markers were used and the diatraction procedure was performed as you can see on the video on the right side. What analog impression won't tell you immediately? And the benefit of digital impression, if errors are occurring during the impression taking, you can spot them immediately. What you can see here is improper scan of the major scan marker, uh, which would cause wrong implant position during the model design. If you see sort of a badly superimposed scan marker position like here, this one is imposed right and this one is wrong as you can see here uh, on this uh, right picture and in this moment we have to stop and reconsider an impression retaking now we have three options option number one is to scan again but the lack of a stable soft tissue might have been contra contraindication to the scan to the digital scan 
Option number two is to take a classic analog impression with an open tray and analog transfers. And we have an option three. You can use a special stereoscopic camera with a special scan markers to scan the exact distances between implants to achieve the passive fit. There is a special scanner designed for this kind of applications. For example, a peak camera which identifies scan markers and measures all distances between implants with a very high precision where the passive fit of the final restoration is a must. In this case, we had a straight comparison between analog and peak camera aided digital impression. So looking at the analog impression is hard to judge if it's either correct or not. By the digital impression, we can immediately check if every layer of the impression aligns properly. So we're immediately able to judge if the impression is either correct or incorrect. And then a straight comparison, complete analog workflow as seen here on the left, compared to the fully digital milled restorations on the right. We have checked both types of restorations, both types of workflows, if they fit onto the analog cast, as well the passivity checkup intraorally, if it all fits um, intraorally on our implants. Digitally designed restoration checkup on the right side. We have achieved a perfect passive fit of our implant restoration. Full case overview. Before and after the treatment it was a very hard and large case. And this is a radiological situation before, before the treatment, the initial situation and 12 months post-op and post-op recall. Going digital now. Now it's your turn and you have to ask yourself a question how much digital dentistry will change your life in the nearest future. And the future, what's next? New types of zirconia, hybrid ceramic composites, graphene, intelligent materials, full digitalization of our everyday procedures, dynamic bite registration, full virtual reality glasses, stereoscopic scanners for full arch implant cases. This is our future or actually it's been said that it's coming soon but we can surely tell that it's already there. This is how our dental life is going to look in the closest future. New materials like this 10 layered PMMA for permanent restoration. Materials which are going to be cheaper faster to produce, more predictable and reliable. And in cases that if anything has happened, we can produce the same material again with very low costs. With a little bit of addition of gingiva and we are ready to finalize the case. And finally, heading to the end, fully digital, full arch workflow with no model design. CACCAM Digital Full Arch Workflow. After doing the preparation, we have to do our scan. And if we're not satisfied with the margin of our preparation, we can cut the insufficient data and refine the places where we have done the preparation, do some more retraction and then over scan again. Then we can keep scanning and blocking the surfaces which are scanned well uh, to avoid the gingiva collapsing. And you can see the places where we have to overscan again, and places where we're not satisfied, places where we were satisfied are blocked, and the other places were left. Then we are taking the byte registration in a certain relation which is needed. And after all, when the scan is ready, we can do the post-op checkup of the acquisition and then the post-op checkup of the acquisition and bite if everything seats properly and the, uh, there are proper relations of 
both uh, jaws to each other and this is how it looked like before and after delivering the full case to the patient. That was initial patient situation and this is how it looked like after delivering the restorations. The restorations were full contour zirconia with a little bit of a cutback and digitally equilibrated without any kind of models. So we haven't involved neither digital 3D printed models or die cast Gibson models in this case. So everything was done, the whole workflow was done totally digitally. So going digital, why not? Complicated looking things done with passion, repeated multiple times with self-discipline, held under control might be fun. So having control over what we do leads us to add more and more complexity over what we do and even though it might have looked complicated, it's all there and it's all possible. Thanks for watching my webinar. Please feel free to visit and like my Digital Dental Education Facebook page where more interesting digital news and cases are being presented periodically. Digital Dental Education on Facebook and also you can visit my YouTube channel as well as there are many more films from digital scanning techniques to watch. Uh, it's been Paweł Paszkiewicz. Thank you so much for your attention. Hope to see you next time.